KCNA via Reuters North Korean leader Kim Jong-un hugs a military scientist after test launching an intercontinental ballistic missile. North Korea has worked for more than a decade to build nuclear weapons and missiles. Although Kim Jong-un, the isolated nation's leader, has been called mad and a rocket man, a U.S. nuclear policy expert doesn't think H.E.S. crazy. Kim Jong-un likely wants nuclear weapons to deter U.S. invasion because he doesn't trust the country. Obtaining nuclear weapons would give North Korea a chance at diplomacy more in its favor, similar to China during the Cold War. But Kim Jong-un could also take his country in the opposite direction. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has been called many things, crazy, mad, insane, and rocket man, because of his program to build nuclear bombs and missiles capable of launching the weapons to the U.S. But experts say he is not crazy to want a nuclear arsenal. And Kim Jong-un doesn't necessarily want nukes due to a desire to use them on the U.S. or any other country, contrary to what bellicose political rhetoric might suggest. He is not crazy. He has consolidated control over that country in a very effective and ruthless manner, Jeffrey Lewis, a nuclear policy expert at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey, told Business Insider. He's just willing to do really terrible things to protect himself, which I think tells us something about the credibility of their nuclear threat. Such a threat is indeed the purpose of the weapons, Lewis says, but almost certainly not their end goal. If I were Kim Jong-un, I would want nuclear weapons, too, added Lewis, also who publishes Arms Control Wonk, a site about nuclear arms control, disarmament, and non-proliferation. Here are the most likely reasons why Kim Jong-un wants a nuclear arsenal. The U.S. has a track record of breaking its word with rulers at photo, Ina Iraqi President Saddam Hussein in 1995. A watershed moment for U.S.-North Korean relations occurred during the administration of George W. Bush in the mid-2000s. They very sincerely tried to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, Lewis said. The talks came after questionable accusations that North Korea was cheating on an agreement not to pursue nuclear materials production. But one of the problems the Bush administration ran into was the U.S. track record with Iraq, formerly led by Saddam Hussein. How do you assure the North Koreans, when they sign a deal, that they don't end up like Saddam because Saddam had actually given them the WMDs, and we still went ahead and said he had them, and we still went ahead and invaded Iraq, Lewis said. They realized they had to find a way to convey to Pyongyang that, if they went ahead and gave up their nuclear program, we would NT invade them. So Lewis said that the Bush administration pointed to a disarmament agreement with Libya and its ruler at the time, Muammar Gaddafi, and how the U.S. continued to hold up its end of the bargain. I know why they did it at the time. It was the right decision, Lewis said. But we had a disarmament deal with that guy. We told the North Koreans to go look at how well things had worked out with Libya, and then we turned around and toppled the Libyan government. App images Kim Jong-un far left and his father, Kim Jong-il far right. These foreign policy decisions happened during the rule of Kim Jong-il, the father of Kim Jong-un, but his son has not forgotten them. Kim Jong-un, I think, is fearful of ending up like Saddam Hussein and Muammar Gaddafi, Lewis said. He is terrified that we will do to him what we did to them, and has decided that nuclear weapons are the best way to ward it off. It's unlikely North Korea has nuclear and thermonuclear weapons as reliable as those in the U.S. arsenal, if the country has deliverable weapons at all. But Lewis says this doesn't really matter in the big picture. Every military system has developmental problems and issues, and maybe not work as well as it should, Lewis said. But they have all of the skills and expertise in place, and they've demonstrated the vast majority of things. He added, if tomorrow, they were going to put a nuclear weapon on a missile and fire it at my house, and you asked me, how do you like your odds? I would say, I don't like my odds at all. This is now a serious enough capability that we have to start assuming, on a bad day, a lot of their stuff is going to go well. But nuclear weapons as a stick against the US is not the only reason North Korea wants them. A risky, play for better diplomacy KCNA a test launch of North Korea's HWASONG-14 ICBM. Some reports suggest Kim Jong-un wants to use nuclear weapons to strong-arm South Korea into reunifying with North Korea. Lewis doubts this is true, though does say Kim Jong-un is insatiable for power. I am sure, if given the choice between controlling North Korea and North Korea and South Korea, he would clearly prefer to control everything, Lewis said. I don't think, though, that this explains their nuclear behavior. 
that may be because Kim Jong-un's ability and capacity to take over South Korea, at least not as a smoldering crater, is virtually nil. Lewis also said North Korean ISNT building the kinds of nukes that would be consistent with that goal. What is possible if not even likely, and perhaps surprising to many Americans, is that North Korea may see obtaining nuclear weapons as a way to improve its relations with other countries, including the U.S. Lewis has studied the history of China's nuclear weapons program, and it has many similarities to North Korea's path toward nuclearization. China set off its first nuclear device in 1964 during the presidency of Lyndon V. Johnson and, two years later, launched a live nuclear warhead atop a missile to prove the capabilities of its program. The U.S. view of these events during the Cold War was grim. But over time something shocking transpired. If you had gone into Lyndon Johnson's office in October 1964 and said, the Chinese are about to test a nuclear weapon, he would have said, that's terrible, Lewis said. But if you would have then said, no, 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 it's great, this is really going to improve Chinese security, and as a consequence of that, China is going to reorient its foreign policy, and they're going to become anti-Soviet and pro-American, and we're going to have a diplomatic relationship with them. Lewis continued, Johnson would have asked you, really what president is going to go to China and meet with Mao Zedong and you would have said, Richard Nixon. Then he would have thrown you out of its office and said you were an idiot. Associated Press Chinese Communist Party leader Mao Tse Tung left and U.S. President Richard Nixon shake hands as they meet in Beijing. Nixon's visit marked the first time an American president visited China. But that is exactly what happened when China's proven nuclear capabilities deterred U.S. military action and opened the door for increased local aggression or international diplomacy. China chose the latter. The reason it happened is because the people who wanted nuclear weapons in China also wanted a better relationship with the United States, Lewis said. His point is to suggest that North Korea's motivations, notwithstanding its horrifying human rights abuses, may not be so nefarious as rhetoric and propaganda suggest when it comes to nukes. In fact, it could be that North Korean nuclear scientists see themselves more as doves than hawks. But the country's murky future direction is ultimately up to its leader. It is possible that the North Koreans will take the security they are given by these weapons and spend it on being awful, sinking more South Korean ships, shelling more South Korean islands, initiating more crises, Lewis said. It will depend on how the North Koreans choose to act now that they have this capability. They could be easier to get along with, they could worse. Instead of always assuming the worst, Lewis thinks we should all practice being more neutral about how having nuclear weapons might change the country. I don't want to be optimistic, because it could really, truly go either way. North Korea could become more aggressive, North Korea could become less aggressive. But we should wait and see, Lewis said. You don't want to prejudge something like that and foreclose what could be a very easy offering at peace. But this does not appear to be current U.S. thinking, as President Trump hopes to expand nuclear weapons capabilities while American military forces appear to be quietly training to face a conflict on the Korean Peninsula.